Hi, this is Ed. Uh, welcome to my percussion studio in the back of the Drum Exchange in Seattle, Washington. Uh, this is where I teach drum set, marimba, vibes, timpani, congas, gem may, hand drum, a little bit of everything. And what I'm going to do just uh, for a few minutes is give you a very quick overview of how I teach. Although normally when I first meet a student, I will uh, meet with them for about a half an hour at least and explain my program thoroughly so that they understand what they're getting into. And it is a program. It really has kind of uh, a place to go. As far as the drum set is concerned, I do teach the entire drum set at once usually, unless somebody is just very specific that they want to learn <laughs> military snare drumming or something orchestral. But most of the time I like to teach the full drum set because you might as well, if you're going to learn the drum set, you're going to learn the snare drum at the same time. And it's going to keep your feet busy. And one day, if you have, if you are interested in orchestral music, and you want to play the snare drum, and maybe your bass drum player and cymbal player aren't there, you could sound like a marching band. In fact, I've used this drum set uh, as a marching band. Uh, there was a piece of mine I write music for TV and film used in the Blind Side, and I need to kind of a drum corps sound. And these high toms sound like quads on a marching band. So you can hear this thing really can sound like a marching drum set. Uh, so basically, I recommend getting a whole drum set if you're going to do this, if you want to learn the drum set. And that includes the snare drum, high tom, middle tom, low tom, or floor tom, bass drum or kick drum, one, two, three, four, five drums, ride cymbal, crash cymbal, hi-hat. And there's another video about buying a drum set that you might want to check out. I'm not going to talk about that today. But basically, as far as drumming is concerned, there are three categories, and this is on the other video too, what we call playing time which can happen on the ride. And that keeps the hi-hat busy as well. Fills, end of the phrase, and then punch, kind of the accent. We have time, fill, punch. Jazz, time, fill, blend, fill. So pretty much I'm using this five-piece set and then three symbols. Everything else that's here is really duplication. I have another ride here, a lot of crashes, and you can have endless crashes. They all just kind of sound to mix together like that too. So generally, if you're going to learn the drum set, you can learn a lot of styles at once. There's really, uh, I, I recommend being as versatile as you can. Um, it's a lot more fun that way, and you'll develop a, a lot of cross uh, techniques between one style and another, and one instrument and another. In fact, the way I teach is pretty much universal. The same technique I use here can be used on hand drums, marimba, all that sort of thing. And I'm not going to get into detail with that. There is, uh, there is what we call traditional grip, which looks like this, and that happened from older school angular snare drums. I generally don't teach that unless somebody really wants the jazz or something. Usually that's something that I do later on. But basically how I get started with people is go through what I what, what really are called sticking patterns, combinations of rights and lefts, alternate strokes, doubles, paradiddles, combinations of alternates and doubles, paradiddle, 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 paradiddle. When you put these on different surfaces, you get some really immediate rhythms out of that. Here's paradiddles. Those are all just paradiddles, and I can put them anywhere. see, the more surfaces I have, the more limbs, the more ways I can play this. So basically what I encourage is to learn sticking patterns, all these, all these combinations of rights and lefts, on as many surfaces and limbs as possible. And from that you can actually get time, fill, and punch. For instance, that paradiddle pattern could happen between the bass drum and the snare drum. Paradiddle, paradiddle. If I have the speed of my ride, It's kind of a funky rock beat. So it's, it's really endless in general. So what I do is I spend about two to three months going through these sticking patterns and explore Latin, jazz, rock, classical, a little bit of everything from this perspective. And there's a book of mine that I, I created about, I don't know, about 10, 15 years ago, Ultimate Stick Control, kind of a takeoff on stick control by George Stone, a famous book from the 30s. And what I've done is, is very very much taken a database of sticking patterns, groupings of twos, threes, fours, fives, up through eights, combinations of rights and lefts that fit in that many notes. For instance, 
If you only have two notes to play and you have two hands, one and two, there's four possible stickings. Right, right, left, left, right, left, left, right. On the other hand, if I have three notes to play, one, two, three, one, two, three, and two hands, I could play three rights, three lefts, right, left, 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 right, right. Anyway, there'd be eight possibilities. Four events, four notes I play, there'd be 16, it goes on. By the time I get up to eight notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, simple drum fill, there'd be 256 sticking patterns that would fit there. And that would be to the degree of surfaces that you're playing. So if you know math, 256 to the fourth degree of surfaces, I don't know, that's 256 multiplied by itself four times would tell you the whole total amount of fills in this amount of space. It'd be like thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. Anyway, it, the numbers just are astronomical, and it's not to intimidate you, but just to kind of open you up to all the possibilities. Uh, for instance, if I were to teach you combinations of alternates, paras, para, 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 diddle, para, 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 diddle, that's actually a 16th event pattern. If I play that on cowbell and snare drum, I get an immediate samba. If I were to add a pulse to it, By putting it on different cowbells, I get even more possibilities. So this is what I do. I explore sticking patterns and apply them to surfaces and limbs and use a database of mine to create those patterns. Now, when, when you play a paradiddle on two surfaces, and I leave one hand out, I get a syncopation, an irregularly spaced rhythm. Therefore, all the R's in this book, right, left, right, left, all the R's become notes, and all the L's become rests, and that becomes the other book, Ultimate Syncopation, a takeoff on Ted Reed's syncopation from the 50s. So basically, these are kind of the sounds the, uh, uh, the, of the language and the words, the vocabulary. This is the idea. This is why I take time to explain stuff in person. Um, eventually, we do learn how to read, and there's lots of books I get people into. Stick and Drill by Stone, which teaches us rolls, things like that, drum rolls. Syncopation, which teaches us these irregular rhythms. Um, this book, Learn to Play the Snare and the Bass, I like. It teaches you snare and bass at the same time to sound like a marching band or generally to get ready for a school band or orchestra or anything like that. And then Realistic Rock for basic rock to funk type of patterns. Uh, there's a book uh, from a, a friend of mine in Chicago, Drumming for Dollars, passed away a number of years ago. And this teaches you jazz, Latin, a little bit of everything. Uh, Advanced Techniques for the Modern Drummer by Chapin, this is a great book of jazz that teaches you ding, ding, ding against very syncopated snare and bass figures. Very difficult parts, stuff to do. And then Drum Sessions by Peter O'Gorman, a great book that I like that has a CD play along and teaches you time fill punch, mostly from a rock perspective. Some of these books have volume tunes and it goes on for a long time. So drum, drum instruction is something you do weekly. Uh, it, it can take months, years to really do it. I, I spent seven years uh, from one instructor when I first got started, and then I started from another instructor on mallet instruments at the same time, so uh, my background is pretty extensive. I, I got a degree from Indiana University and then moved out to Seattle in the, in the late 70s, uh, and I've been teaching for a long, long time. So it's, it's a real program, it's a true curriculum. But if you do it, if you work a little bit at it, uh, it's amazing what you can do. What I do tell students is there's three things necessary to be successful at this. First of all, I think you got to have some equipment. I really can't really teach somebody the drum set without a drum set. If you're learning piano, you'd have a piano or a keyboard. And drum sets are 200 and up, so used or new. So it's not that big of an investment. Secondly, private lessons. That's where you're going to get actual technique. You can't really learn that in a group, as far as I can tell. And then thirdly, get yourself in some sort of a, an, an ensemble. And that could be a concert band in school, a jazz band, eventually uh, it could be a garage band. It could be playing along with the CD, but I like the idea of motivating you out to play with actual other human beings. Now there's other instruments I'm going to show you in the studio here, uh, the congas and mallet instruments. Uh, and basically the techniques I use are the same. So once we learn this universal right-left concept, it's transferable to almost anything in the room. So let's take a look at the rest of the studio. I did want to mention one more thing that I do that's important, is I play along on keyboards and drum lessons, especially drum set, but other instruments too. And this is important because everything you learn on the drum set has to be put into context. For instance, the, the ride cymbal that we play over here 
is related to say the bass line. Uh, the, the Brazilian samba bass might have something to do with the bass drum on the drum set. In funk, the bass line might have to do with the bass drum as well. So there are, there's references to everything we're doing here. So it's important for me to be able to sound like a full band, and that's the idea of taking a bass, chord, and melody and putting them together. Three parts, two hands, not easy to do. In, in say again, samba might be. Pulses and syncopations, irregular rhythms, different parts of the of the band play different things. In uh, say salsa, you have a very syncopated part in the piano. The bass is also syncopated. So all of these rhythms reflect on the drum set or vice versa. So you want to hear how they sound in context. So in general, in the lessons, it's a really good idea to be able to hear how you're playing along. We use uh, in here. We also use iTunes. There's a lot of play along CDs, and we have a good PA system here, so you can really hear everything while you're playing. And that's important at home that you have over-the-air headphones and you really play along as much as you can. So this doesn't become just a closet instrument. You really want to get out there and play as much as you can. I do teach congas and uh, djembe, hand drums, that sort of thing too. Uh, Cuban congas. I wouldn't say I'm a <laughs> uh, star player or anything like that. But again, I take a basic universal approach to these instruments, their surfaces, I play them with my hands. The big, big difference is with stick technique, you play with your wrist and your fingers, you don't use your arm that much. When you play hand drums, it's more arm over the wrist. We call it all Latin, Latin jazz. This is the Cuban side. The Brazilian side has to do with smaller instruments generally, little uh, cowbells and hand stick percussion. African style tends to be more the djembe. This is a, a neat djembe. It's a plastic one by Reno, a plastic head. It's got incredible bass. So uh, in general, this is really popular in indie bands these days. Of course, drum circles, that sort of thing. And with this type of instruction, you definitely want to uh, connect with drum circles or Latin bands, things like that. And all these instruments can go together eventually. They don't have to be one or the other. So to me, it's all just experimentation and make up your own music as much as you can, too. I do teach the timpani as well in the studio. I have two set up. Timpani can be played what we call match grip as well as, as the drums and marimba. It can look like this German style or French style or so say Italian in the middle. I tend to teach German style first, but also teach French style. A lot more difficult, but it's a really pretty tone. Tiffany require keyboard skills in the end. It, you have to understand, especially bass clef, because that's what this is This is similar to. So I do teach books on how to uh, do this, and, and a lot of the students that do this are also taking mallets at the same time to make sure that they understand the keyboard. This is the marimba over here. This is a four and a half octave concert marimba by Yamaha. It goes down an octave and a half to low F and it's a really pretty sound. It's really kind of a cello range. I teach generally two mallets to get started, but fairly quickly I do teach four mallets. There's different ways to hold the mallets, but that allows you to play chords as well as melodies. You can play 
classical music on here, jazz. tend to play this either as a chord instrument or a melody or a combination of those two. And then somebody else is playing bass. But because I do a solo one-man band that you have to kind of see, I play bass lines and chords and melody and try and put them all together. So it's a little, little different. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. And when I teach students on this instrument, I teach them bass lines bass lines, chords, and melody, and really teach it more from a, a keyboard standpoint. So contact me about more about that information. The vibraphone is the metal bar instrument over here, and uh, you can play with two or four mallets. Uh, the, the marimba and the xylophone are related. They're both wood. The xylophone is the higher octave of the marimba. And this marimba is pretty big, so it pretty much has a xylophone on the top. So that's really the xylophone part. The marimba is kind of more down here. The bells or glockenspiel are the high range of the vibes, so they're related too. So this is kind of mallet percussion. And if you start off on the drum set and you combine this with keyboard skills, you wind up over here. You need an instrument to practice this stuff? Yeah, pretty much. You need access to an instrument. Many schools have xylophones or vibes or things like that. But you need regular access. So in the end, I generally see the best success when students actually have some kind of a mallet instrument. You can get a set of bells, a little set of bells for under to a couple hundred dollars. It sounds pretty good. But they don't quite give you the same range as these instruments. So this is the world of mallet instruments. If you're interested, give us a call at the store. Thanks. So there you go. That's my kind of summary, quick summary of my, my teaching studio in, in Seattle. So if you're interested in lessons, please give us a call in Seattle or, or go to the website drumexchange.com and give us an email. My email address is edrums, E-D-R-U-M-S, at AOL.com. And our phone number in Seattle is 206-545-3564. So uh, feel free to give us a call. I, I do have a newsletter that I put out on Monday mornings. It's managed uh, newsletter email. And that gives the current newsletter, uh, the current schedule of my lessons too. So it's really easy to schedule lessons throughout the day. I generally teach from Monday through Thursday, sometimes Fridays, in the daytime from 9 to 6. We do have a second teacher here, Vance Nurkla, who's been with, uh, working with me for many, many years. He's a great rock player, great drum set player. He also teaches here generally in the evenings and the weekends right now. So if my, my uh, curriculum or uh, schedule doesn't work for you, we do have other options here. Um, so anyway, give us a call for current rates and times available, that sort of thing. Info session is always first. That's the first thing we do, and that would be an extension of what I, you just watched here. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll, we'll hopefully see you in the studio down the line. Thanks a lot. Keep drumming.